Abscast. Obviously, the most famous uh, monument, if you like, is Stonehenge. But there's loads, there's loads and loads of, of stone circles and stone rows. And uh, they're big. That's why they're called megaliths. So somebody goes to a lot of trouble to put to put them up and place them in a certain way. And there's been so much speculation. And usually what happens with historians is if they don't understand something, they don't say, we don't know. They just say, oh, it's for ritual purposes. In other words, it's somehow... You can't understand it because it's a different mindset, a different religion, if you like, or culture. And that sort of covers everything. And you look at it and you think, well, there's nothing religious about them necessarily at all. I mean, it's like saying, oh, we found a an old building. It must be a temple. You have no idea what it was. All you can say is that there was a building here once upon a time, you found the foundations. There's nothing to say it was a temple or a church. It's the same with these stones. You can't just point to them and say, oh, well, they put them up like a sort of uh, somehow, you know, ask, asking the gods to protect them or whatever, or for a good harvest. That was another one. They thought that Stonehenge was a calendar of some so sort. So in, in the case of the stones, they create a narrative or an explanation to fit a hole because they don't know. They don't want to say that they don't know. They, they don't have any record. It's before they had any kind of legible writings which they can date to the time. You've got this really great big thing in the middle of England and others dotted around. They don't understand how or why they're there. <laughs> so they make up a narrative because it's the go-to argument to fill a hole because they can't turn around and say, we don't know, and that would be the end of the line. So they have to put something in to fit what they're... Yeah, so in the middle of Salisbury Plain, you've got Stonehenge, say, and they sort of, they think it was a... Well, there's various theories. One is that it was an agricultural calendar, so people would know when to sow the harvest. Yeah, so That's for anyone who doesn't know, sort of... so if you don't know the geography of England, you know that um, England's a funny shaped country and it's kind of got like a little boot at the bottom, which is where Cornwall is. And then you've got London, which is in the south. And then sort of slap bang in the middle of England from east and west, from where London, if you keep going westly, you'll hit Bristol. Pretty much equidistant. Yeah. You've got this county called Wiltshire, or Wiltshire, if you are in uh, <laughs> North American <laughs> territories. And it's all open, it's all vast, it's all farmland. It's and fields, it's flat. And it's flat. Whether it's naturally flat or whether it was made that's flat, the that's, point. A, that's, a, yes, that's that the point. Nobody but, would sort of know. This is the other problem is that you're talking about thousands of years ago. It, you're talking about, uh, let's say, 3000 BC. So you're talking so about 5,000 5, 6, five or 6,000 years ago. Since when all sorts of activities have been going on. So you can't say whether something is natural or man-made. But the point being... Not always. But the point being, it's in the middle of what we would call nowhere. You've got, you had in a, the middle of a plain. In yes. the middle of a plain. So you had settlements, doesn't matter what they are, doesn't matter if they exist or not, but you had little tells, or you had little forts, you had places where people were congregated, but basically, from, from what we can tell, this area was open, it was flat at that time, so right bang in the middle of nowhere, you've got this great big construct, away from civilization away from permanent habitation, you've just got this ruddy great big thing. And people just didn't know. So, so And there were lots and lots of stone circles though. There were well, nobody knows how many there were because some of them have been destroyed or fallen down. The Stonehenge has been reconstructed. So, so some of the stones <coughs> had fallen down and they had to put them back up again. That, 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 that's the thing. So that's that's part of the go back to that original narrative is you've got this structure doesn't matter how they date it, it's a bit like the city of Troy, where you've got Troy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You've got this thing, whether it's the original thing or not, you've got this thing, which they can't explain, and so they come up with a narrative, 
and the reason why this thing might have been rebuilt many times could have changed down the years, but the point being is they don't know, so they come up with something, and that is what people are fed, whether it's on TV or whether it's in school. People are taught this narrative that there's a really great collection of stones, the most famous of which is Stonehenge. They don't really know what it was for, why or how, why it was where, where it is, or what it was for. So they come up with an excuse, and you're just pigeon-fed that sort of parrot fodder, for want of a better term. You have yes. I mean, some some of the things that I mean, we're talking about famous archaeologists and historians, and you see them on television, and they will say things like, "Oh, it's to honour the dead, to honour the ancestors." I mean, and this like all, a, like a tomb or like a like uh, a so, so, something like that. Yes, yeah, like a I suppose a sarcophagus or some kind of funerary uh, memorial or something. And, uh, but there's no evidence for that. I mean, some of the... You know, if 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 you or I or somebody else sort of came up with these theories, you'd be laughed out of court. It's only because they happen to be, you know, have the right letters after their name that people don't laugh at them. It's quite interesting because on the back, what you've done is because you don't just talk about Stonehenge, you talk about an entire... Empire, it's almost like a civilization which spans Europe, and I don't know if you can see that here, but again, I will include the link. Yes, because we don't just have megaliths in this country. Yes. No, very true. So I'll, yeah. I'll include the link um, where you can buy a copy of this, but they're all over Europe. So it's not just Stonehenge, although that's arguably the most famous, they're all over Europe. So it's a network of these things. I mean, they didn't all sprout up at the same time, and we don't even know if they were for the same reason, but they're all grouped together, and we're just fed this this fodder, which they, they, I guess, I don't want to say they've just made up, but they don't really know why. They just, they feed it to us as a line to feed to us, and we're expected to believe it. That's true. I... Ads cast.